Life Audio. Today we are continuing our conversation where we left off yesterday about the week three portion of the She Hears Bible study. And just a reminder that this study is go at your own pace. These episodes are not going anywhere. The study isn't going anywhere. There are some people that take an entire week to do one day. If that's you, it's okay. Just keep going, friend. Hey friends, welcome to the Hearing Jesus Podcast. Do you sometimes doubt if you're truly hearing God's voice or if it's really your own? And how do you know the difference? Do you ever struggle to feel confident in your relationship with God and what He says in His Word? Do you sometimes feel stagnant or like maybe you hit a wall in your spiritual life? Hey, I'm your host, Rachel Grohl, missionary, author, pastor, and life coach. And I have been there. I too was doubting God's voice in my own life. I felt insecure about my relationship with Him, and I wanted to be obedient to what God was calling me to do, but I wasn't quite sure how to figure out what that was. I felt like I was wasting time trying to figure it out, and I just wanted a way to understand His will for my life. The answer for me was found in the pages of the scriptures, as I learned how to understand what they were actually saying. If you're ready to grow in your faith and to step confidently into the calling God has for you, then join me as we dig deep into God's Word so that you can learn to live out your faith in your everyday life. Picking up where we left off from yesterday's conversation. Taking those things to Jesus. That's how we get to a place where we can climb out of some of that sin. Because he's the one, remember, he's the one that takes it from us. Takes it from us. He snatches it away. We talked about that a couple weeks ago. As the deliverer, as the Messiah, he snatches away those things that we can't give up on our own. But that continual process, it's a daily process of renewal, a daily process of coming to Jesus and saying, hey, I messed up. And and he doesn't look at you in your mess and say, well, you lost your temper today, so Rachel, you're now uh, Rachel the angry woman. That's not what he says. He says, give it to me. I love you. Don't do it anymore. And inevitably, I'm going to do it again. But th- thankfully, um, the relationship I can still have with God through Jesus is what gives us the grace to keep moving forward. The goal is as we progress throughout our lives and we become closer to Jesus, we become more like him and we will sin less and less or struggle less and less with those things. But I want to go back to John 15. Um, we've, we've said it a couple times throughout this study. We get to a place where we understand that we are powerless against this sin that keeps us trapped. And, and John chapter 15 talks about the vine. And apart from him, we can do nothing. Apart from him, we can do nothing. So it becomes a process of continually renewing our hearts, renewing our minds through our relationship with Christ. The thing about sin... sin is it's a stain that we can't get rid of on our own. I remember um, a couple years ago, I got a really nice shirt, a favorite t-shirt. We were on vacation in Disney World, and I got a t-shirt, and I loved it. And the first time I wore it, after I was home, I wasn't thinking. I was cleaning up the kitchen, and I had bleach spray. I sprayed down the, the kitchen counter, and as I did, I got a little bit of bleach on my shirt. And oh, I was so upset with myself. It was expensive and it was a happy memory. And um, so it was on the black spots. So I took a black Sharpie and I took just, you know, colored over the, the, the bleach spots. And I thought, okay, problem solved. Except two or three more times after I washed it, guess what? That permanent marker, permanent, started to fade and the bleach spots came back. So I would touch them up again and those bleach spots would come back. That happened over and over again to the point where I just eventually gave up and just let them stay bleached. The stain of sin is there in our lives. We can try to cover it up on our own. But they, it will not be completely wiped clean until we give it to Jesus. Until we meet him where we're at. And we sit down with him long enough to understand. And as he teaches us the best way to move forward. That's what deals with our sin. That, you, that sincere interaction with Christ, that's what deals with our sin. Because the reality is, is we cannot deal with it on our own. We might try to cover it up, or we might pretend it's not there. But that stain follows us around. And it keeps us from a relationship with God. The reconciliation that we can have only comes through Jesus. Sin is... 
is definitely a barrier to our relationship with God. And this week we talked a lot about our own relationship with God and the, the barriers of sin that keep us from abiding close with Christ. But I want to go a little bit farther. And we did talk about this a little bit last week. But I want to talk about it in terms of how we see others. The tendency we have, deep down, if we're honest with ourselves, is to judge, judge other people in their own sin. We have, for a long time, served in a community where the opioid epidemic is really high. And even walking through Walmart, um, it's not uncommon, uncommon to see somebody high, out their mind, off of drugs, just acting like a crazy person. And um, it used to be really easy to just put that person in a certain category and, and judge them and say, you know what, they, they're, they're nuts, stay away from them. I remember probably about five years ago, I took my daughter to McDonald's. It was a half day of school for her. And my other girls had to stay in school full time for the, till the rest of the day. So I took her to McDonald's. We don't normally go to McDonald's. And it was in a part of town we don't normally go to. And so we went into McDonald's. I took her and her little friend. Um, and we got our Happy Meals and our ice cream. And we were sitting at the table just enjoying our, our, our meal together. And sitting across the room from me was um, a transgender man who was transitioning into a woman. And he was with a friend. And he was sitting at the table very loud, um, very cussing a lot, um, making kind of a spectacle out of things. And you could just tell... Um, he was in a place of desperation. I don't know if he was on drugs or, or what else was going on. It was a very um, awkward situation. And I had these two little girls with me. And I remember praying. I said, okay, God, if you want me to, to, to reach out to him, to minister to him, I need you to open a window because I don't know what, I don't know what to do with this right now. Um, it was, because I didn't have just my daughter, I had my friend's daughter too. And my daughter is used to me doing all sorts of crazy things and talking to whoever. Um, but other people's kids, it's something different. So I remember just praying, okay, God, if you want me to reach out to him, I, I need you to open a window. And as soon as I finished praying that prayer, um, this guy shouts to me across the restaurant. He said, hey, I'm sorry for cussing in front of your kids. I just realized you got kids and I'm really sorry. And I was like, okay, there's your window. And so I, my, the kids were eating their ice cream. And so I got up from the table and I just said to them, stay here. They were a couple feet away from me, so they were fine. And I walked over to his table and I sat down. And I said, I feel like God wants, to tell me, t wants me to tell you something. And he just stared at me. And some tears started to well up in his eyes. And I said, you know, God loves you. He has a plan and a purpose for your life. And whatever you're feeling right now, He's not too far away that he can't still reach you. And I found out through tears, through tears, stained cheeks, um, that this individual had the night before tried to commit suicide, was squatting in somebody's house, just living there, and had been caught by the cops, had run from the cops and um, ended up at McDonald's, was homeless had been beaten up time and time again because our town um, had been very hostile towards him. Um, he wasn't able to get a spot at any of the homeless shelters because of his orientation and um, some regulations. This was a couple years ago. So what we had in front of us was somebody that was completely desperate and ready to take their own lives. And so I prayed for him. And I invited him to church. I invited him to be part of our lives. Um, that may sound like something that you wouldn't do. Um, and in fact, there was um, an older couple in the corner of McDonald's who, you know, was whispering in hushed hush tones and pointing and glaring. And um, I wish this wasn't the case, but I recognized them as prominent church members at another church in our town. And I was the only one that reached out. To this individual so we became friends and um, that relationship has not been perfect 
we're going to take a quick break right here. And when we come back, we'll finish up this conversation about week three of the She Hears Bible Study. But I don't see him the way the world sees him. I see him the way that God sees him. And so um, I had the opportunity to preach actually on the Samaritan woman at a local church and um, a couple of years ago. And I think it had been on Facebook or I don't know where it was shared. They said I was going to be speaking. And he came. And afterwards, he came up to me, tears in his eyes, and he said, I just got out of jail. This was my first Sunday to be able to come to church, and I wanted to come see you. And he said, thank you so much for sharing the story of the Samaritan woman. Because I said, he said, I, I feel like that was for me. There's a lot there. There's a lot that's going on in his heart and his mind. Um, obviously. But if we as believers don't reach out to the lost and hurting, how do you think they're going to get to Jesus? Jesus is the only chance they have at peace, at coming out of their sin, at co uh, coming out of their suicidal mentality or their depression or their anger or their sin or whatever it is. Jesus is the only chance for that. And as believers, if we run away from that and we don't guide them to Christ, how do you think they're going to get there? They're not. And so regardless of your position on the chaos that is going on in our world right now, um, this month is Pride Month and it is in your face right now. The response of believers is not to hide inside their houses. The response of believers is to lovingly speak the truth in love and guide people to Jesus. It is not our job to clean them up. That's the job of Jesus. Our job is to get them there. I wish I could just pray one time and this individual would be healed and whole. I can't. But what I can do is continually push him towards Christ. And that posture of speaking the truth, but offering love and grace has been what has guided him closer to Christ. That's my encouragement for you this week. And I'm not trying to lump all sins into one category. And I'm not saying that we all have the same sin and I'm not putting um, suicidal, you know, drug induced uh, jail time in the same category as jealousy. Please don't misunderstand me. What I am saying is, is that we have all been there. We have all been there and we will be there again. And if it's only one sin that separates us from God, then the reality is, is we are all guilty and should be condemned. That's why we need Jesus. And so if we ourselves are capable of doing something that could drive a wedge between us and a perfect holy God, then what right do we have to judge others that are entrenched in other sin? We don't. We don't. What we can do is point them back to Christ. What we can do is walk alongside of them and love them the way that Christ loves them. What we can do is call them by their name, loved, cherished, treasured, forgiven, not by the label that the world puts on them. That's the radical kind of love that we see in the pages of scripture, and that's the thing that God calls us to. I want to pray with you before we go, and I want to pray that this week would be a week that you would not only accept the grace and the forgiveness that God offers for you, but that you would feel convicted and release the judgment that you have for other people. And instead, turn around and lead them to Christ. I'm praying for you this week. I'm praying that God would use this study in your lives. That it would use, he would use it in such a way that, that you would get it. Like he's sitting down and he's sitting with you and explaining to you his heart for his people. That's my prayer for you this week. God, thank you so much for my friends. Thank you for your word. And thank you that you speak the truth in love in a way that draws us to you instead of, push, instead of pushing us away. God, I pray that we would be that same light and love for people in this crazy climate that we have right now. That as believers 
that know and understand the hope of the gospel, that we would be the light in those dark places, that we would speak the truth and in love to those that are hurting and alone in the darkness, God. Lord, I pray that we wouldn't shy away from others because of their sin or because of their labels, but instead you would burden our hearts for them, God, because we understand that we were there too. In fact, we're still there sometimes. God, I pray that just a posture of grace would overwhelm our hearts in such a way that we have no choice but to reach out to others through the love that you have for them. God, I thank you for my friends this week, and I pray that you would be with them, that you would work in their hearts in an amazing way, that they would sense your presence and your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. I know you've been frustrated with being confident in how to tell the difference between hearing from God and wondering if it's your own voice. Listen, I know. I've been there myself. That's why I wrote the Bible study, She Hears, Learning to Listen to Jesus. This is a six-week study that takes you through the book of John, looking at six women in the life of Jesus. It also teaches the color method of Bible study, which helps you to learn how to really understand the scriptures. I include lots of cultural and historical information, and it really makes these familiar passages of scripture just come alive. This is a great study to do on your own, to do with some girlfriends or even some teenage girls, and it will help you really gain the confidence in how to hear from the Lord and set you up with some tools that will stay with you long after the study is over. You can find that on my resources page at shehears.org, where there are also some really good resources to help you in your spiritual growth. I pray that they are a blessing for you. I want to take just a second to thank the team at Life Audio for their partnership with us on the podcast. If you go to lifeaudio.com, you'll find dozens of other faith-centered podcasts in their network. They've got shows about prayer, Bible study, parenting, and more. Hey friends, if this podcast helped encourage, empower, or equip you for God's call on your life, I would love it if you would head over to Apple Podcasts and leave me a review. That's the number one way you can support my show. You can also join our free Facebook community or Instagram page where I share inspirational tips, resources, and prayer throughout the week. Hey, I want you to know I'm praying for you this week. Know that you are loved, you are cherished, and you are His.